Let's rock and roll. All right, Nemanja. First, let me make sure I'm saying your name right. Nemanja Zivkovic. Mm -hmm. Nemanja Zivkovic is right? Yeah, I, I don't expect usually people to kind of pronounce it right. You pronounce it just, just well. It's Nemanja. And uh, uh, in, inside Balkans is Zivkovic. Outside Zivkovic. I'll say yeah. that. I want it to be right. I want it to, people's name is very important. I want it to be right. So. Um, I want to welcome Nemanja Zivkovic to the Modern Startup Marketing Podcast. And this is kind of a different bit, different kind of episode. Typically, I have startup founders and marketing leaders on here. And Nemanja is uh, CEO uh, at Funky Marketing. So he's got his own marketing agency and um, started this company in 2020. And it's been growing. You now have six total employees. So I'm um, very excited about that for you. And um, so Funky Marketing, it's uh, based in Nova Sad, Serbia. And um, they're basically helping B2B tech companies generate revenue growth, which is pretty important. And they're doing this through primarily through inbound and content strategies and scaling those things. Um, and so uh, how did we connect? So we connected over LinkedIn. And the really quick funny story is that um, I messaged you back saying, I don't know who you are, so I'm not going to connect with you unless we actually meet and, and talk virtually first. And then I'll get to know you and I'll be more comfortable connecting with you. Uh, now I'm a little bit less, uh, you know, um, crazy about not connecting with people. But before, when I was just getting more into LinkedIn, I wanted to make sure that uh, I'm connecting with the right folks. So I'm very happy we connected. We've already chatted on your uh, podcast. And um, and so now I'm so excited to have you on the the Modern start Startup uh, Marketing Podcast to talk about some, some of your expertise, some of your experience, and your company. So welcome. Thank you for that great, great introduction. Uh, I mean, it's it's good to hear about yourself and your company from somebody else, uh, and somebody else that you that you respect and that you follow as well. And kind of interesting, like I, I don't look at Funky Marketing as a, as an agency. Like uh, I look it up as a team because like marketing agencies are all that we dislike. So we want to go totally in a different direction, and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's been an interesting journey, so let's dive into it. I'd, lo I'd love to do that. Um, so going back to what you just said was interesting. I also had that thought. Should I call you guys an agency? Because when I started my company, I, did, I also didn't really want to be called an agency. And I typically say that I'm a, I'm a marketing consultancy, um, firm of marketing consulting. I even put it in the name because I wanted to be to stand out and be a little bit different. So that association with agency. So what do you tell people that you are if you're not an agency? Yeah, we are, we are a team. We're a, a team, team of people that will uh, move the earth, um, the sea and the seven skies to do uh, whatever is necessary to get results. And this is the best that we can do. Awesome. Love it. And what I love about you is that you are very people oriented and this is going to come out in this conversation. I know, like, I love your passion. You're very passionate. You also don't beat around the bush. You tell it how it is. And some of these characteristics and qualities that you have, I, I that's why I enjoy talking to you. Um, and so let's, let's go ahead and jump right in. So Talk about your role right now at Funky Marketing. As a CEO, you're probably, you have your hand in a lot of different things. What are you focused on right now? Yeah, I, I, I do actually, and I don't like it uh, that it is like that at the moment. But anyway, trying to trying to change that. Actually, we started as, a, I started in, in the middle of January, 2020 the, the company and the idea was to kind of it's me myself and I just learning uh, more about entrepreneurship about uh, how to develop a company but like then COVID hit then a lot of clients wanted to uh, wanted me to accept more uh, more things to do for them and that's kind of where we start growing and then like the 
um, I didn't actually hire people. They just kind of, kind of uh, like approach me, then like how I'm communicating the story, the name, everything. Uh, and also the, the results I was sharing. So they kind of uh, approached me. Uh, so I hired two people and for the majority of time, that was like the core of the of the funky marketing team. We, we had two more people and they are still with us doing like uh, video editing and uh, visual stuff. Uh, and right now, I think today I hired two, two people that will uh, help us with, with more stuff. Uh, we, we are not just a company that have people inside Serbia. We now have somebody in Spain as well. And uh, like, I'm kind of trying to get myself out of the, the operations and uh, be the one who will come up with, with innovation, who will further develop things, who will have more time to get back to what I was doing at the start. So think more about what's, what's next. How do we develop this thing? uh cause like we we um have gone through an interesting journey in in a year uh primarily with figuring out who is who are our target customers clients with whom we want to work with and it kind of followed the process of how we are like crafting the services and narrow it down and actually uh what are some of the things that we are doing because like just this moment before I jumped into the call, somebody told me on Twitter, like, it looks like you guys are really crushing it, but I don't actually understand what you're doing yet. Uh, and like, I still didn't find a way to present that on the website, but I kind of said, okay, but I can write two articles and write it down in it. Cause when I explain it on the sales call, people understand it super well. Uh, and so I kind of crafted two, two articles. And now when somebody asked me, I said, just read those two articles and that's it. Lo I love it. Yeah, it's an it's, a, it's something that is definitely has been a focus of mine too, because uh, what we know as marketers, which is still hard to do as people, is to, to narrow down your focus, narrow down your niche and who are you for and who are you looking for and who's your ideal client uh is the best thing to do to narrow that down and then explain it so people understand it better but it's hard it's hard to do um so so does that mean that you're kind of focused on you're focused on building out your team kind of jumping into client work um you're focused more on innovation right because you hired you're hired some more people so that's really where your focus is is on the innovation the new stuff and and helping clients with that innovation right yeah i mean in a way i, I know what we are doing clients know what we are doing they know why they are hiring us so kind of what i'm doing right now is uh actually making the team stronger so we can uh, go faster to the results and we can like uh, deliver, make sure that we deliver on what we promise, because this is the core of, of what we should do. And uh, kind of that's, that's where I was like, uh, at the moment uh, we don't accept new clients. I want us to, to perform for this that we have at the moment and then like kind of build the momentum up to, up to what's next. Cause um, I mean, we'll talk about it later, I think about the, um target groups the the ideal clients and those kind of things so we'll get, get yeah more of Let, let's let's jump right into that because we were just talking about it i think it's a very nice segue into who is your ideal client so you're gonna have people you're you're turning folks away and saying nope we're gonna focus on those the clients that we already have who do you love working with who who and what do you look for yeah so we go in two directions actually we thought that we are going into directions i will explain why uh like our ideal clients are companies between 10 and like 70 employees that uh already know who they are they know what differentiates them they know their story they know the culture values so we are taking them uh with what they have at the moment and get them to the next level uh kind of getting the people outside of the company in front of the company because like we are working with tech companies and uh, usually the people are their biggest assets. And that's what we are focused at. We use people to show them in front of the company and use their power to take them to the next level. 
And with that, we are bringing like the feelings, the emotions, the creativity, uh, the storytelling, everything that, uh, that B2B doesn't have at this moment, we are bringing it to the companies and helping them be, be actually who they are, not just an object, but, but the people. And uh, that's on one side. Uh, on the other side, we, we are still helping uh, solopreneurs, like kind of build their own personal brand, uh, even though, even if they're like entrepreneurs who are just starting or the ones who are changing the career. So kind of something that we do, because we do that for the employees of the companies, but we do that also on a personal level. And uh, the third option uh, is like, we have two enterprise level clients. So uh, they came to us inbound. Actually, I think like I closed 30, 31 uh, company this year, all inbound. And um, like they came to us, they said, okay, we have uh, 400 employees right now. And we want to grow to 6,000 in five years. We want to become the unicorn and we want you to help us do that uh, while we come up with the contracts and everything. They they bought more companies, so they become the company of six hundred people. And now uh, I told my team, like, forget everything that we were doing right now. This is totally different beast. We gotta approach it differently because you cannot work with six hundred people uh, right now. So. Now we, we do things a little bit differently, like work with the management team, work separately with marketing and business dev team, then uh, overview the process of, uh, of how they are uh, implementing what, what we taught them uh, on the other part of the team. And you know, that's just how it goes. And to be honest, I'm trying to build the first uh, company of uh, 100 plus employees. I think Drift didn't have 100 employees when they did the took over of LinkedIn. So that's kind of what, what I want to do. Wow. Okay. So there's really three separate buckets then that you're looking at. Um, do you think that you will focus over time more on like the 10 to 70 people companies or do you think you'll always have a mix of all three of these? Yeah, I, I I don't know about enterprises. I guess yes. It all depends on who are those companies because we cannot work with with any company. Like uh, we are totally different. We are totally informal. We are uh, direct, honest, and there are so many companies. They are very like straight in the way they communicate, in the way they they just write emails, and it's not something that, that we can do. So. Uh, I wrote a few days ago on LinkedIn, like I'm telling the companies right now on the sales call, like right now, before we actually get into anything, we are different and you need to know that. Uh, so that's kind of the thing, because if we are that way, that's the only way that we can bring the change into those companies. If we are like them, we won't bring the changes. And, um, yeah, so that's that's on one side. On the other side, I, I like us always to be in the dirt, kind of, because that's where we see what's next. Even though it's like solopreneurs or if it's a, if it's a startup, there always needs to be at least one startup so we can we can see how things are moving, going, and so like uh, the guys from the company can my employees can do can do different things because uh, I know that they won't be here like forever they will all at one time move on and i want them when they move on to to like kind of learn more and know more than they did uh when they entered the company so no matter if they become the entrepreneurs or work for somebody else like that's just continuation of our relationship not at the end of it yeah yeah i love that that way of thinking um so Awesome. So, so you basically are, are trying to figure stuff out it's still, it's the first year. I totally get it. I'm in the same boat. I'm also figuring out, you know, um, ideal client, how to explain what I offer. How do you think about the services that you offer? Do you have a couple different buckets? Do you, 
um, because I've I've seen some companies that are basically they their pricing is all right. Working with us is five thousand bucks a month minimum or ten thousand bucks a month minimum, and here's what you get. And maybe they'll have another option. Is that how you think about pricing too, or or differently? Yeah, that's kind of kind of the way we need to structure it in like three packages because I like to give people a choice. Um, why? Because if I don't give them, them enough choices, they will go to another place and to find more uh, of that. And so we have a kind of like uh, three packages. All of them have a strategy based on LinkedIn because uh, I don't want to do it instead of them. Uh, we are focused on results and to come up with the results we need for B2B. We need LinkedIn and we need strategy. So that's kind of the, the first step. Uh, first package is something that doesn't involve con creating content in, in, in ways that it doesn't involve like writing articles, newsletters, those kind of things. And usually the companies that get the first bucket are the ones that already have uh, content on their website. They just never shared it anywhere. Uh, the second one is like, so, we come up with articles, with those kind of things. And on the third one is uh, include advertising. And then it all depends. They're kind of like different things uh, based on how many people are involved in the strategy, how many articles are, are like, uh, internal uh, workshops and lectures involved, like kind of uh, are we building the team inside the company because if we really want to do it right way on LinkedIn, then we need to create sort of a content hub inside the company. So what, what comes out is actually just the extension of what's happening inside the company, you know, those kind of those kind of things. And that's where we're at. It's been quite a quite a journey, I think, so far. Like uh, I think now we, we changed the prices, we raised them up for like fifth time since the beginning. Um, just coming from Serbia and people were looking at us like based on location. And I think right now we're in a place where we can say like location doesn't matter anymore. Uh, now we, we are kind of getting close to creating a brand. People know who we are. They know the value that we're bringing. They know that we are kind of different. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, but it took us a year to get there. Yeah, and just curious, is the focus on the B2B tech companies, is that just based on your experience working on that side? Like, why not do B2C? And also that those diff those like 10 to 70 people companies or solopreneurs or, you know, that are focused on building out their brand targeting in that arena? Yeah, it's, uh, it's because I've been working in B2C like all my life. And um, I mean, I've been working in agency and with startups, but all of them were focused on uh, on B two C. And I did I did a lot. Uh, I did a lot. I worked with more than seventy companies. Um, I worked in performance marketing, and uh, like I saw it has a plateau. I saw that it has a plateau, and uh, it it stops when you when you stop advertising when you do something different. But I also learned that uh, there are emotion involved, how the people react. There's a huge amount of creativity over there. And I just wanted to use that to take it to the B2B. Like uh, I didn't just decide I'm just going to go to B2B. I saw that B2B is seen as a um, mystical, foggy place when uh, people think of their ideal clients as the companies, as objects, they, they really do even today. They don't look at it like, I need that person on that position from that company. On LinkedIn, you can find it by the name and the surname even. You can find it the city, or tweet. you can go on Twitter and find like that they're interested in like, I don't know, fishing or NBA or baseball or whatever, and just get into conversation. No, they, but if you look at the company as the object, you can never go in that direction. And then you just talk about about yourself, about your features, about those kind of things. Like, um, let me give you an example. I was just, I just finished actually being a mentor for like agri tech startups here in Serbia. And 
all of them were talking about about features and one of one of them are creating like technology like uh, recording the the fields with uh, with drones and uh, like having all kind of uh, visuals out of that and like the, the the farmer actually asked them like I don't care what kind of technology do you have but what what is in there for me like I don't care if you are using drone or you're using something else if you're using just phone camera but what do I have out of it you know and that's what matters that's right the the benefit to the person that's that you're trying to get attention from that that might be interested in your product what's the benefit to them that's also a big challenge that I find folks are are having a hard time splitting it taking themselves out of the equation and thinking what is the benefit to the buyer per prospect um, and less about you, 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 your company and your features. It's hard to do too. So that's a really good segue actually into the fact that this is the first time that I've got you, a fellow ma marketing business owner on this, this pod, on this show. And so I'd love to ask you, where do you find that most of your clients, which are typically B2B tech companies, are getting marketing wrong, are getting growth wrong? Like what are the biggest challenges you're seeing over and over and over again? And we started to hit on some of these uh, ideas, but please, please share. Yeah, so uh, where do I start? <laughs> um, let's get from the from the very beginning of the year. Uh, and it's like me and some other people like Chris Walker, a uh, few of them, Chris Walker was very big on, on this thing, was like, uh, don't go after meaning your MQLs and go after SQLs, sales qualified leads. Uh, and this is the first thing. Actually, why it is happening? Because companies have marketing teams and in B2B sales cycles are very long. It can take from six months to nine months, even, even more than a year sometimes. And the CEOs need to have some kind of um, proof that marketing team, team is doing something. So when you think of it like that, then you can, okay, how many leads do we have this month? Uh huh. Okay, so the next month we need to have more and more and more and more. I mean, sales have all those meaningless leads. They don't, they can just call them, but those people aren't really interesting to buy something. So they get pissed on marketing and you create all kinds of destruction in the, in the company. And this is like the present situation. And I don't think that situation is changing. Uh, I, I wish uh, it, it would change like this year, but as as I'm seeing it, it won't. Because like we need the change of generation, generation of seniority in the companies for that to happen. We need people who are with different mindsets going over there. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing is all of them are still creating content for the search engines. Uh, and they forget about that content on the website. Uh, I mean, they share it once on the company page and then like the four people for the company like it, maybe a few of them share it and then like their, their friends and relatives see it and that's it, like maybe 14 to 40 people actually uh, see it and, uh, and they forgot, they, they then get to another article and that's how they got people from the... Um, from Google on the website, but they don't have relationship with those people. You know, they're just there because they they find the features, they find all kinds of different things. And like the CEO won't get on Google and search for something. They might be, but then it's also up to um, do you have a customer support well? How are the sales guys? Like all kinds of different issues appears in that way. Uh, and um, also, yeah, I mean, somebody can do the research uh, instead of the CEO, but it's not, it's not the same thing. Like just being out there now, everybody are social media and being out there, it's kind of the way to have direct conversations with your potential clients. 
And uh, yeah, that's that's also another thing. There are a lot of I am just thinking about how many things I can I can talk more and, and the list goes goes on and on and like but I think those 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 two let's stick to them and like those are the ones that um, if we change them I think we will have sort of a game changer and also like uh, bringing things that we already told like emotions feelings creativity inside it. Um, wrote a post few days ago like uh netflix spotify airbnb they're doing really great stuff of going out there to meet the customers to meet their users they are not waiting for them to come towards them and they are creating that kind of experience along with the users with the customers and uh what do you think will happen will are we gonna gonna just pretend that other bigger brands than, than those three companies uh, are doing something different and we are going to approach them differently when we already have that experience. Of course not, we won't. We, we will search, seek for that experience from also those companies and I think these are the things that will change in the next year. What, what can you give an example of what, what is, what, how are they meeting their customers where they are and creating these experiences? Like what is Netflix or Airbnb doing? Yeah, I mean, if you if you look at it, like they will give you personal experience what uh, what is out there for you. So, what are some on Netflix? What are some series or movies that you need to watch, or what is something that's coming up uh, that is uh, that might be interesting for you? Also, um, Airbnb, like they will give you specific things that you want to have in the apartment when you're renting it so like you're not a smoker or you have dogs and like those kind of experience they will tell you like there are three apartments in, in this city that you sometimes wanted to go maybe you want to go there there is specifically one in the best location now available that accept dogs and uh we will give you uh, I don't know the discount, so you can go just over there. Like, and it is time for you to do exactly what you wanted to do. And they are kind of helping us do the things that we wanted to do. Like, kind of just uh, trying to guess our experiences and go. And yeah. also, like, just take a look at the social media. Like, uh, a lot of brands are now uh, seeing that and going towards customers and like getting involved in the conversations that's right yeah not shying away from that um yeah i i i can see what you mean by that I, i'd love to explore those two things again that you mentioned the challenges going after the sqls versus going after the mqls i'm let's start with that one i'm still having conversations with folks and i we we're talking about goals let's say for 2021 and the head of marketing is saying, I have a goal of X, whatever it is, to, to increase my MQLs. And um, the reason that they're focused on MQLs from the marketing standpoint is that it's, it's a lot for marketing to cover the full funnel. So they want to focus on top of the funnel. What's your advice for um someone that has that mindset like oh it's just you know might be a person a, a team of one or a team of two and it's so much to focus on the entire funnel and how marketing can create that impact from the very beginning to the the end result the closed one the revenue um so they want to focus on just the top of the funnel what's your advice for that person um they need to build a content machine that's that's the the first thing and the only thing uh, so look, that might work like focusing on top of the funnel and only like getting MQLs might work if there's a, there's different uh, world out there for like MQLs, SQLs and those that are like in the middle of the funnel, right? Uh, but all those people are in the same places. And if you're communicating just with one out of three, then you will get just one out of three because others will look at other places. They won't be interested in that. And that's how you, you need to communicate. You need to communicate with 
all those people uh, in the right places, but in a different manner. And uh, if you create the right content, this and distribute it the right way, this is how you get it. You don't need that many people. Like um, right, right now, you're recording the podcast. So uh, let me give you an example of something that, that we do. So uh, when we start working with companies, uh, there are specific things that we do. First, we we focused on personal brands, personal profiles of the uh, well. In most cases, those are like um, management. Also, like marketing and business development team, it all depends how many people are in the company. But we use their profiles to build their personal brands, hammering over pain points and telling their personal stories. So mixing two of two of them, uh, and through that we kind of communicate uh, building their personal brands. We build the company brand, and people uh, when they have enough information, they go to, uh, they reach out to them on LinkedIn or they go to Google, they Google their name and surname or the company name, and that's how they, they convert on the website. And uh, when they are ready, of course. If, if they type name and surname, then we know that we are close to creating personal brands of those people, uh, but it can take time. On the other hand, what we do from the, from the company pages perspective, uh, we do these kind of things that you are doing. So we advise uh, companies to uh, invite people uh, from uh, their target companies. So uh, let's say this this guy is like I don't know the company go uh, is doing finance. So we need to target CFOs. So we invite the CFO of the company to come to our podcast. We ask them all kind of things like how they are choosing vendors. Uh, why they are changing vendors when they are changing. We ask them uh, about the buyer's journey, how, how it goes, like we go through each step of it. And basically we ask all the questions that we need so we can close the deal. And uh, I mean, everybody wants to come to the podcast because everybody wants to talk about themselves. And when we finish recording, we uh, share them the, the recordings so they can share them on their profiles. We post it on YouTube as a long form content. We create our article out of it. We create visuals, quotes, all those kind of things uh, for the social media. We also um, repurpose it for like five to eight short videos up to 10 minutes for, for LinkedIn page. And we build the company page by building personal profiles of the people who are actually our target customers. So, and at the same time, from the personal uh, profiles, we are adding people from the company. Uh, so, so more people from that company are seeing the content. And the way we, uh, we did the podcast, we asked them all the important questions. We hit all the stages of the buyer's journey. So we are educating the whole market. And uh, so that's how it goes. It's not something that goes like, we create a podcast, we pitch them, we close them. It takes a lot of time and we are trying to, to get uh, through that by creating the content and actually showing it to the people where they are, when they are actually consuming it. Okay, that's fantastic. The one thing you mentioned though, um, and just a fact with content, uh, content marketing and content strategies and inbound is that it takes longer. Branding takes longer. And what I mean by takes longer is um, it takes longer to even like for people to get their head around like how this even works, how to even do it the right way. And it also takes longer um, versus outbound, like inbound just takes longer because your people find your stuff, your information, and they and you you have a journey in your head that you want them to take, but people kind of ha have their own journey that they take. So then the sales process might take longer versus you picking up the phone as a salesperson talking to someone and saying, "I can deliver this, this, and this to you. Are you ready?" And they are actually ready. Let's say it's that like the one percent that's ready to buy. That's faster. So how do you reconcile the fact that what you're offering to clients is going to take longer, but then they do have goals that they need to hit? And um, how do you have those kinds of conversations? 
Yeah, let's let's get into it. So it's usually because uh, marketing is in sales first uh, department, and it usually takes twice as time to come up with the results than it takes to a, to a sales team. Uh, when you hire somebody in your sales team, well, you give them let's say three months to close the deal. When you hire let's say marketing agency you want them to deliver results right away but it's not happening because content needs time to work but how do we uh, what are some things that we are doing to like actually shorten uh, that uh, span of time so we use advertising but advertising on facebook and instagram uh, and we don't go after mqls again we want only to distribute content to the right people so they can consume it we distribute it to the to the CEOs or decision makers on one side and on the people who will use our service or products in the company on the other side. And we do it with news like articles, um, researches, uh, case studies, testimonials, those kind of things, all the things that they can consume in like uh, preferably three minutes because everybody has like three minutes and the way uh, advertising on Facebook and Instagram works if they are like three minutes a day spending only on uh, one of the platforms that that is under Facebook umbrella then uh, the algorithm will show them the ads exactly at that time and we just want them to consume the content so we watch at the channel level if uh, the right people are reacting if they are then we are watching at the website if uh, they are actually reading the articles or watching the videos if they are then we know that uh, they will come back and convert. It just depends on how long is the decision maker process in the company. And uh, I mean, this is kind of the things that we saw from the experience. Uh, and it took us time to, to realize that it's not something that just, just happened. Uh, also, uh, when we do things the way, the way I described, when we create like the content marketing machine, uh, then we, have sales guys uh, who are getting less uh, less leads, but more quality leads, more educated leads, the ones that just click the button, I want to talk to the sales. So they can they can close them easily and they can actually clo uh, close bigger deals. And when this is the kind of situation, then the sales team, instead of talking to hundreds of MQLs and spending time on that, they actually have time to go outbound and do something different. And that's kind of how, how it goes. Like in the most companies we work with, like sales and marketing are aligned under the, I don't know, usually it's under the marketing. I don't know if it's like CMO or VP of marketing. And um, like their community, if they are aligned, they are communicating with each other weekly. So exchanging ideas, exchanging experiences. And so they are aligned on, on one thing. And this is like the revenue. I love what you you remember when I was on your show and you're like, all right, Anna, I'm just going to let you roll with this. And I was talking and talking and talking. This was a, this is the part where you just kind of went on your um, your uh, like this train of thought and bringing in all unpacking all of these great ideas here from the, the why to focus on SQLs, how it benefits the entire company and how to think about re revenue from a marketing perspective and how marketing does not equal sales, but also your experience from performance marketing back in the day with, for B2C it comes in handy now, right? Because now you have a way to shorten that time frame. You're using advertising, you're, you're targeting the right people with educational stuff. And that makes them more educated um, in order to like when they come back to the site, now they know have enough information to click that button and say like, I wanna talk to sales now, I'm ready. So thanks for unpacking all that. That was that was great. That was a really, really nice, um, that was a really nice uh, clip that I'm going to pull out and <laughs> use for, from this show. Um, great, so we, we talked a lot about um, what, Basically, we spent a lot of time talking about the challenges you're seeing over and over again. So I appreciate you digging deeper into that. Um, what's it like starting a marketing company in Serbia? Uh, I'd love to know. And I know the world has gotten smaller, especially this year. But what are the opportunities you're seeing? What are some of the challenges you're seeing? Well, uh, look, I'm not some somebody who would uh, be called 
can be called as a typical Serbian guy. So uh, it's a little bit different. I was always somebody who has it's his own opinions. And uh, like just before the pandemic hits, I was supposed to be uh, a speaker at the conference. And they told me like, you cannot talk about LinkedIn because we already have some speakers uh, that we talk about LinkedIn. Uh, okay, you cannot speak about a little, little, little kind of different things. But uh, anyway, when they announced me uh, as a speaker, uh, like they, they, they wrote that I'm somebody who is like polarizing people. And I was like, why? Uh, the only thing that I want to do is just to help people, nothing else. And uh, it's funny that now, a year after that, like um, one of those speakers that um, that was supposed to talk about LinkedIn uh, instead of me is working with me and we were supposed to start working on her personal brand and the other one applied to work with me. So uh, it's kind of interesting how the, the circle goes and how everybody is perceiving the knowledge of, of a certain platform. And you know, and also perceiving somebody who like people were saying about me back a year ago that I'm somebody who's just talking, not doing many things. And I said, okay, it's finally time for me to uh, come up with a company and show the, the people everything that I know and all the things that I learned so far. But because like maybe the CEO didn't want to get into that or they were different kind of people. They wanted they have different ideas i couldn't implement all those things so now is the time uh, when i don't have somebody above my head uh, it's time just to go for it and it was kind of interesting like um i landed my first client the actually i think five hours after we crafted the landing page based on my personal brand um we were actually in belgrade on a on a marketing conference, advertising conference, uh, and like they they wrote us an email. Hey, we we saw what you were doing. We downloaded. They were the first one downloading the uh, the PDF of thirty pages, like the strategy that we crafted. And like we saw that you are in Belgrade. We looked at your social media profiles. How can uh, if you are gonna be there tomorrow morning? Maybe you can come and we can talk uh, about working together. So that's how we landed the first client. And um, what's that thirty-page document that you created? The strategy. What what is that material? Yeah, I was I was thinking how we how I can start, and we just uh, while we were creating the the website like. Uh, we created the landing page and a document. It was literally like one sentence landing page, like create a strategy that will help you grow your business. And it was actually a strategy of 30, I think 32 pages. Uh, but in every step of the strategy, we explained the services that we are offering. And we included examples of the companies that uh, me and the guy that was with me at the time, um, that we uh, results and the strategies and all the things that we have done in the previous agencies working with with different clients from all around the world like uh, and um, that's yeah, your that's, lead, that's your lead it. gen right your lead gen material yeah yeah it was literally like five five um, email sequence after that where we did with the CTA to schedule a call and uh, yeah, that was basic, basically it. And then the pandemic started and um, I hosted like 10 webinars, uh, which gave me a chance to like, grow the email list uh, to 500 people. And um, yeah, I, I just kept on doing things and sharing some things out of it. And uh, from those 10 uh, webinars, we had content for like the next three or four months, we started repurposing it, started like um, talking more about what we do, how do we do it? Like we changed the things as we were developing, as I already told you, like we uh, figure out who are not the good clients, who are the bad ones, like, and I'm somebody who is finding inspiration and talking directly for everything I do. So kind of, if you wanna go and scroll over my LinkedIn profile, you will, 
you will find out the, the story, how it, how it went. Also, like I started with Marty Sanchez from Spain, a podcast, B2B Weekly, which we are recording live every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Uh, with the audience. And we are talking there about how we are growing. We both have like, let's say agencies, uh, but we are talking about the way we are growing the team. Like, uh, and if somebody goes now and listen to B2B Weekly, he will, he or she, they will hear uh, how I was thinking in like May this year and how I'm thinking like yesterday. Uh, and it's kind of like, this is also the material that I'm, that I'm using now to give to my employees. When somebody comes to the company, I get them just listen to the podcast because I was talking every Wednesday and you can see how my mindset is changing, how I'm talking about the team, how I'm talking to growing the team, like all those kind of things. And uh, we also use that podcast just to share, to take things out of us and to share it as a content. And... Uh, Basically, I just share the things that I'm doing. And it, it, this was actually not only sharing, but also doing the things that work for us, for me, doing it for the clients. And this, this is basically the, all the things that we were doing. Wonderful. So from the last question about Serbia, sounds like there are a, there's a lot of opportunities. Any challenges that you're finding? Or um, is it now because the world has changed so much that you can basically work from anywhere and have clients from anywhere? No, there, there are challenges which I'm trying to, to make um, not challenges anymore. And this is the thing that I mentioned, like we needed to raise the prices and everything because I can't hire just anyone from all around the world, like somebody who is building the company in US can. Like um, I don't have the money to pay a thousand euros for somebody who is just starting. I don't have that kind of money and I don't want to do it. I don't, don't see it as the right way, uh, but I'm willing to pay what uh, the amount of money that somebody deserves if they, if they are really good at what they're doing. Like the sky is the limit in that way. And uh, this is how, how I'm seeing things. From Serbia, there are a lot of people that have worked for like US uh, marketing agencies and usually those are the agency of people who are just building agencies so they can sell them and then go from one to the other. And they have the money to pay people. And they got used to like, we are working for the US companies. Now this is how much we are worth. And then they come to, to us as like company based in Serbia. And we cannot talk on the same level based on that because they don't have on one side the knowledge and on the other side, they are too expensive. So getting the right people and finding the people that have the knowledge is kind of hard. And the other segment is there are now a lot of people um, that are available to hire. But like I posted some things that I consider like the um, media marketer need to know. And like nobody. Basically, nobody out of people that reach out to me uh, didn't know how to do all of that. And it was very disappointing in a way. And it uh, kind of um, made me realize that, that like, I need to do some things differently. So I either need to teach someone uh, or I need to go and hire seniors. So this is, I cannot go in the middle. And so kind of interesting, interesting situation and uh, interesting challenges. And so that's why I said, okay, we need to raise the, pr the prices. That's why we went big on branding. And uh, now like we have the leverage to do what, what we need to do. Awesome. So something that's been on my mind uh, lately is, um, you start a company, you have clients, you're growing your team, but then there are other ways to think about um, how do you grow your company and how do you how do you make your company work for you a little bit, right? So you could step away and you're doing other things and you still have like the basically this is having something online that's always on and people can find it and buy it 
um, because you have the expertise, but maybe, but it takes time when you sit down with a new client and you're talking to them, but maybe for some folks, if you have some sort of like an online knowledge sharing kit or some videos, a series of videos or something like that, those can always be available and people can just purchase on their own time and you don't have to put yourself into the equation. Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, there is there is also a dead thing connected to Serbia. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Like, we cannot sell to to worldwide from Serbia online. This is the problem, and this is one of the reasons why like businesses here aren't growing at at the rate that they could grow. And like, I mean, I did in the previous agency. Like me and the owner created the. Uh, con conversion marketing course uh, and like we sold it we had a lot of people that went through it that, that achieved great results uh, but I didn't want to do it because you become somebody who is just promoting education and those kind of things and I'm okay with promoting that but I'm not uh, somebody who wants to look at it as a product now I mean we are developing some things inside the company that might become products and we'll see about that but uh, i'm definitely um, having a will to to try to i don't know create a product or create something that i can work with like especially SaaS is interesting all those kind of things but i don't know uh when the opportunity arises i'll i'll ride along yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to get your thoughts on, on that. That's been on my mind lately. Yeah. So, one, one, one more thing. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that I wanted to do, but COVID uh, kind of stopped me from that. I wanted to create an event uh, which will gather people from marketing uh, to do everything except marketing. So, like kayaking, riding mountain bikes, hiking, uh, having intimate conversations with kind of like uh, talks from the industry leaders uh, at night uh, and starting from Serbia taking it all around the world and I think it's very achievable and something that is missing in the in the industry uh, but like COVID is here and all those kind of things so I needed to leave the, this at aside for the moment. Well keep me posted because I'd love to do sounds like a fun retreat for marketers I'd love to be part of that community. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> and when you take it to the US, let me know. Um, so with a few minutes left, uh, I want to ask you if there's anything you wanted to share, maybe something more personal about yourself that will help connect you to the to the audience that's listening here. Um, anything that you want to share? Yeah, I, I, my comics are, are behind the screen, so I cannot show it. But like, first, read comics, because it will spark your creativity, it will uh, give you a chance to find out how to um, write better copy, how to create a conversation, how to enter new people into conversations, how to uh, craft a scene for, for some things that you want to do. Uh, also, another thing is uh, listen to the music uh, as much as possible, any kind of music. Uh, the third one is go out in the nature, um, especially the forest. Uh, I mean, I'm somebody who likes mountains more than the sea, but like combination would be uh, amazing. Uh, and the fourth one uh, is try to do things uh, outside of business that will allow you to be better at what you do. Um, by that, I mean, I don't know, like some things that I did is I bought the owner of the agency where I work at uh, bought a huge jeep. So I was director of operations, I, the second man of the company. So I needed to do something uh, different. So I bought a bicycle, which is an uh, expensive one and the only one in Serbia. And when I'm riding my bicycle around the city, people are noticing me and I'm getting used to being in the center of the attention. Because like, and then when when situation comes that uh, everybody's panicking around me and I need to perform on the highest level, then I'm relaxed because I'm used to that. And like, just uh, those are like few things that I recommend to everybody. 
uh, I can talk about about so many things, uh, but like I think it's it's enough for now. Wow, that is such a cool technique. I've never really thought about when you put yourself into the situation that's uncomfortable. More, but it makes sense, right? You put yourself in that situation more and more and more times. You end up becoming comfortable in that situation. Then when something stressful comes up within you know your your work. Um, you're actually taking it in stride and it's not as stressful. So what a great tip. Uh, great yeah, technique. I need I needed to do that. I needed to develop a lot of those kind of things. Um, especially like coming from the small city and being somebody who is always always innovating. Like maybe some things weren't new for the world, but from my hometown they were. And uh like then seeing that I'm not the most clever one and it hit my ego so i needed to learn how to accept feedback it took me a couple of years and especially like in basketball or somebody who is very nervous captain of the team uh and like even the judges sometimes provoke me um with a purpose so i can get to technicals and get out of the game um like the change happened one day like in the middle of the street we were playing three three x three and they um, they whistled three fouls of one of my players, so they took him out. It never happened. So I and the other team was being uh, supported by the sponsors, and that's why that happens. And I'm somebody who is reacting when there's injustice. So I took the ball in the middle of the street, in the middle of, in in like the center of my city, with all the audience outside. I was yelling, and I prepared the ball to hit the judge in the head, and like. In the last moment, like I changed my mind and just hit it out of the out of the board and just got out of that. And this is the moment when I when I changed and I learned how to to handle all all those kind of things. Like when my father died, I I knew that he's gonna die 20 days before. So like the one of the famous singers musicians of the new wave of Yugoslavian uh, pop culture died and like saying goodbye to him, I said goodbye to my father, like by listening to the music and enjoying those kind of things. So there you go, a little rant for the end. Yeah, thank you. I, I love to to ask this question because the, this is what really connects you in a more human way. We could talk about marketing all day long, but these are like, the, we're all very much connected in certain ways and have very similar experiences. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, you can reach Nemanja on LinkedIn. He is very active. And I don't think there is anybody out there with your, your same name doing the same things as you, definitely standing out. Uh, and you can find out more uh, about Funky Marketing go by going to funkymarketing.net. So Nemanja, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to have you on here. And let's let's kick off, you know, into ne the next year with some exciting things ahead. I'm looking forward to talking to you again and staying in touch with all the cool things you're working on. Yeah, likewise, Anna. Thanks for having me.